Then, Joe. We are off to see Laura Willoughby at Joint Club Soda where we're going to talk about mindful drinking because on our hot flush symptoms and how to deal with the menopause, the menopause we're always saying cut out your alcohol, it's so bad for so many reasons, diabetes, heart disease, still ring the visceral fat around your big belly and maybe we just need a little bit of support. Laura runs this it's a non-medical sport site um, and we're going to find out more about it. Yeah, yeah. off we go. Off we go. Laura from Joint Club Soda about mindful drinking and how alcohol impacts I suppose on all aspects of our life but for us it's menopause and as we are always talking about reducing or cutting back we thought we'd come to somebody who has a huge blog telling people how to cut out alcohol and you have a blog on menopause and alcohol? Yeah, so I did a, a blog about a year ago about menopause and alcohol and I'm 42 now, Ooh, nearly 43 um, and to be honest I want them to whip my ovaries out there. So <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, after reading that, so I gave up drinking five years ago and after reading what I had written I sat there and thought I'm so pleased I've given up drinking because there isn't anything that the menopause does to your body that alcohol doesn't make worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's oh, really awful being a woman. Exactly. <laughs> well, actually, that's one of our things we'll go. And sadly, alcohol, caffeine, caffeine yeah. all that food that you really quite like, anything yeah. you quite like is not going to do you any good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite honestly. No, and. But I, uh, I would also say that changing your drinking is good for a whole host exactly. of reasons. And if you're drinking quite a bit, then um, there's a lot you can gain from not drinking. And uh, a lot, you, I mean, you gain time, you gain energy, you mm. gain um, all sorts of other things. So it's not a bad experiment mm -hmm. to go through. And now is a really good time to do it. Yeah. It's about, I think it's completely about reevaluating and saying I've got to a particular age and it's really you're at a really good age by the way to be sorting things out because there's where we are at the moment it's in the media or in our sort of psyche we tend to approach the menopause or the perimenopause towards the end but there's loads of change that you can put in place before in so you make yeah. these changes so you're going into menopause in a really good um, with awareness I think that's the thing is we just drift into it Without proper awareness, yeah, it's going of to change. To, Definitely, yeah, well, I think that's what change. we're about. Hopefully, we're going to be part of that. But you're absolutely right that alcohol exacerbates everything to do. It's going to increase your, your anxiety, your hot flushes, your night's it, sleep, your night's sleep, the effect on your heart, the, the mm, effect on your bones, your breast pain, and and your osteoporosis because yeah. alcohol leaches calcium from yeah. the bones. I didn't know that. Yeah. So when you go. Lovely, refreshing end of day. Um, it's a what well, I mean. Alcohol can be. It's a. Well, it's, it's a signifier, isn't it? The day's finished. I mean, People see it as a bad, way of relaxing. Yeah, but a bad day, or I'm yeah. socialising, yeah. and they don't think that glass of wine or that beer or that cocktail. It just tastes nice at the time, but it it's then the has that impl implication. I think there are a number of things, which is. By and large, we're all drinking too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless we're not drinking at all, um, 15 units, if you ever know what units is. I mean, I've been doing this for eight years now. I, I don't, you know, care too much. But if you're drinking at least two glasses of wine a night, you're drinking more than what's recommended by the government. But regardless of what the government says, because I'm not so keen on that, it's about how it makes you feel. And what I've noticed is most of our members are age 35 and over. And that's because they've got to a point where they realise that a lot of their drinking has got incredibly habitual. A lot of it is daily because it, it signifies the end of day, a hard, stressful day at work, all the time they put the kids to bed. And then they suddenly realise, hey, 
that's that suddenly that goes up and up and up from one glass of wine to two glasses of wine and three glasses of wine and the hangovers become harder to deal with mm-hmm. at the same time you've got this consciousness that you're getting older um you need to get a bit fitter it's harder to lose weight and then you know alcohol affects all of those yep. things too mm-hmm. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that the people that join Club Soda are at, at, at that age, mm-hmm. but also that um, then how you choose to unpick that can be very personal. And my advice to everybody is to try taking a month off drinking, um, whether you need to or not, or whether you think you need to or not, because it will teach you an awful lot about the habits you've got into. Mm-hmm. It will teach you an awful lot about the things that trigger you to drink. And you will begin to learn a lot about the things that you can put in its place. And it gives you a nice bit of time to do that. Because changing your drinking is a bit like doing a, pers- uh, doing a scientific experiment where you're both the subject and the scientist. Yeah. Oh, and, I like that. And, and, and I guess going through <laughs> the menopause is a bit yeah. like that as well, which is why looking at things before a lot of symptoms happen rather than after is probably a good idea. Because what you're looking to do is change quite a very ingrained habit. Mm a habit which is actually quite ingrained in our society, let alone in our daily lives. So it's quite hard for all sorts of different reasons. And so you need to learn. And, you know, each time you come across a situation where you find that you've drunk when you didn't really want to, you will learn from that and be able to take that forward. Whether your goal is to moderate or to, or, or to quit in the longer yeah. term, mm-hmm. um, moderation is possible. It's just quite hard mm. because well, I think it depends on the occasion that you're put into, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it can depend also on on how your drinking was to begin with. Mm. I sort of um, I I always say that my off switch broke when I was about thirty two. I became an extreme sport drinker, which meant I you know I could when I started drinking I wouldn't be able to stop, and somehow my mind would be going right. Let's see how much mm. I can drink and then still get up tomorrow morning. I wouldn't actually drink every day, but I didn't have children. It was easy to go out. Um, and and somehow I was in a boring job as well, and I guess late thirties, early forties is a nice time for job mm. crisis as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I it really got to out of control, and I'm I'm my father's daughter, right? My dad died of drinking, and I've inherited two things from him: his drink problem and his boobs. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I I always knew I always knew I would have a high propensity to drink a lot yeah. Yeah. to drink and that I could go exactly the same way as my dad mm. who was a clever but thwarted man and alcohol got in the way of all of that um, so um, I had to take control of that and for me moderating is not possible for two reasons one is I'm really frightened that if I start drinking again it would just go back to d- where it would just go and that happens a lot Mm-hmm. because it happens with diet as well you might have noticed that mm-hmm. you know I was yeah. really good for four weeks on my not eating cake and then I went oh I need cake and then I ate cake every day <laughs> and, then, and then of course you stop dieting or you stop yeah. not drinking because you've fallen off that you take, you take your foot off the pedal yeah. and then you seem to do, do it even worse than you yeah. did before and it's hard yeah. for us to go do yeah. you know what I've had a bad day I'm just going back to it it's like yeah. oh I well, like stop now, now. Yeah. I drink wine and also yeah. um, I've gained too much from giving up drinking and I don't want mm. to lose any of that and I, mm. and I can say that, that the gains are amazing For um, there's also some hard stuff like you actually have to deal with emotions without ever picking up a drink and and learning yeah. to deal with emotions, particularly if you've been drinking since you were 14, mm-hmm. which I imagine actually our age group did, because mm-hmm. you could drink oh, in a pub yeah. underage. Yeah. It's not possible now. No one asked for but, you. <laughs> but, you know, I dealt with every emotion in my life since I was 14. Yeah. Now, uh, with alcohol, now I have to learn to actually sit with the feelings mm-hmm. and deal mm-hmm. with them. It's actually quite yes, difficult. Yes, more self-awareness. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> oh, um, and, and so there's all of that stuff as well. But So I've gained so much from not drinking. But also, if I was trying to moderate, I'd be spending all of my week thinking about the time I'm moderating so I'd be thinking mm. about drinking more not mm. less yes. I drink tonight. it's actually oh, oh, easier yeah. to just go you know what it's not for me anymore um, mm. you know it, it and how it, about dealing with the people who knew you as a drinker how how do you work around that because quite come often on, I get oh, a drink come on. Yeah. Uh, well I mean there are lots of things that can um, Alcohol affects everything, right? Mm. Um, it affects you physically and it affects you mentally hugely. Mm. Um, and then we've got this huge societal pressure because mm. we are in a, quite an alcoholcentric uh, society. And what I love most about club sodas, I've created, I've created a monster, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, because I, 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 I go 
for God's sakes, people, we don't have to put up with this. Phone up the pub in advance and tell them that if they haven't got anything good for you to drink, you're bringing your own, just yeah. so they know. Right. And, yeah. they, and, and pubs something go, interesting. Yeah, and pubs go, oh, yeah, all right, yeah. Then <laughs> So I love it when people do that. So, um, but it does mean that point. that all of the uh, all of the things around changing your drinking, you've got internal pitfalls. So the things like um, you're hungry, you're tired, you're angry, you're stressed. Um, you feel you deserve it, mm. all of those things, mm. or you've got that little internal saboteur on your shoulder going, go on, mm. go on. Mm. It's, it's only strong. one. Yeah, it's yeah. only one, <laughs> and so on. You can start again tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. That, that tomorrow. Yeah. So there, there's all of that going on inside your head. Then you've got loads of pressures, and you may have a partner that drinks, you may have friends who are persistent, you may be regularly known for going out and drinking. And I think there are a couple of things about that. One is that whatever you do, and in any behaviour change, whether you're dealing with cake or whether you're dealing with alcohol, you need to have a plan. Yeah. Um, which is, and I like to use a system called WHOOP in Club Soda, which is wish, outcome, obstacle, plan. What's your wish? My wish is to go out for after work drinks and not drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. My outcome is that if I do that, I will feel like Wonder Woman, <laughs> and it'll be amazing. You have done that. Like you should turn into Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, and I would have done it, and I would have got through one of the hardest things in my diary. Yeah. Then you need to think about what are the obstacles. And the obstacles are that Jan from accounts will go, "Go on, oh, just have one. one. Go and have one." Or somebody will go, "Oh, are you pregnant?" Yeah. Or somebody will, um, uh, or, or are you an alcoholic? Or say something that's really uncomfortable. Yeah. So how are you going to plan for that? That's the point yeah. of the whoop. Mm. And you do have to plan. You have to say, right, well, today I'm not brave enough to say I've given up drinking, so I'm just going to say I've got an Ocado delivery coming at 8.30, yeah, so I have to yeah, leave yeah, early. Yeah. Or I'm not drinking because I've, um, I'm driving at the other end. Or find an excuse. Mm. If that's what works for you at this point mm. of time, do that now. So it's a little strategy. Or a little, it's a little yeah, strategy. It's a little tool in your bag because I think there is that... Oh, you're so boring, you know. Yeah. Oh, come on. And I'm practicing like, saying it out loud as well. And yeah. say, no, I'm not drinking today because, you know, I've, I'm, I'm driving home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm very personal as well, saying, I'm not drinking. I've given up drinking. Because the inference is. Yeah. Oh, well, people who know you well will yeah. just yeah. think, oh. Well, yeah. people who don't will just No, think, but oh. what they're thinking is, oh, shit. I always made sure that I didn't drink more than her so that I was okay. And now they're not drinking anything, which I can tell you. I had one friend who did that to me. Oh, damn, Laura, I always used to pace myself with you and I knew you as a woman, if you were drinking that much, I was I just, doing all yeah. right. Or you, or it reflects back on them and they think you're attacking them because mm. we are actually all really quite self-conscious of our drinking. Mm. Yeah. And so we're all quite um, um, itchy about it and so mm. we all get quite defensive when mm. other, somebody else says they're not drinking. Or, we, or they think we're rebuking their hospitality mm. just because we're not drinking champagne, just because it's champagne. You know, yeah. really, what, you know, how about your hospitality is I want to be here, mm. not and I want to spend time with you, mm. not whether or not I'm drinking your champagne or not. So, yeah. so um, you have to practice all of these things, and you have to have strategies to control or escape. Um, or have and excuses. Be, be strong-willed. Be strong yeah, because yeah. well, there's going to be times when your willpower isn't quite so. Yeah, it's especially if you, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then you yeah. need to remind yourself why you're doing this. What's mm, the yeah. wish that you're after? Are we still whooping? Yeah, you're still whooping. So you need to remind yourself yeah. of the wish you're after and how that will make you feel. And you might also plan yourself a reward for when you get mm. home. Oh, so, like a reward. Yeah. yeah. And, and not a glass of wine. Not a glass of wine. And not a donut. No. And not a donut. But yeah. there's loads of really good alcohol-free beers yeah. and wines mm. out there, so you can actually fake it in the pub as well. Um, but um, but you might have a reward that says, right, because I'm coming home earlier and I still feel a bit happy and sprightly mm -hmm. I can go and have a really lovely bath I can watch a, another episode mm -hmm. from that box set mm -hmm. without I falling can, asleep yeah I can <laughs> I can actually you know for me frozen yoghurt and some fruit is my treat when I get back mm. from something that's been a bit yeah. difficult. So you need to bring, but because it's so ingrained in our reward structure as well, yeah. you know. We need to find mm. a new reward. Well, to be honest, it, we, yeah. we, we drink because we're sad, we drink because we're happy, we drink because we, we mm. feel we need a reward, we drink, you know. To have yeah, something yeah, in yeah. your hand. And, yeah. 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 and we all work hard, whatever we do. Yeah. We are, we're exhausted at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. So whatever the reason, we will do something, and for you, you're saying it's frozen yogurt and fruit. Yeah. And for other people, it might be a bit of dark chocolate and a nice cup of yeah. herbal tea. So it's finding a substitute yeah. reward. Yeah, absolutely. And taking away, which will give you no negatives. You know, because mm. if I go to the pub and I'm spending the evening in the pub and I'm not drinking, but they do scotch eggs as their bar, me <laughs> their bar meal, that's it, I'm having a scotch egg. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. I'm not know. a pickled egg, though. 
please. No, <laughs> That's my know. husband's kind of Yeah, like, I'm kind of going down. Them. There's a little bit of contrast there. Frozen yogurt and fruit. But you can treat yourself with a Scotch egg. Yeah. Well, there we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all it, it, it's, no, it's hardly any carbs in the Scotch egg, right? Okay, so there we are. But you know, but it's got to work for you. And these mm. things, um, there's lots of advice you can get from other people who have done the same thing. Um, it, it, we're all not so different after mm. all. Mm. And even if you're moderating, you still need to plan your alcohol-free days mm. um, because yeah. they're easier to execute. Planning um, to only stick to drew drinks is one of the hardest things because what the minute alcohol hits your brain and hits your pleasure centers it goes oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> well that's where your inhibitions go yeah. well, isn't yeah. that's what so, so you need to take some time out yeah. go in the loo read read your whoop and decide mm. why it is you chose mm. to do this take a walk around the block mm. and also remember lots of people go oh well you know i'm at a party and i drink because otherwise it'd be really boring well you know what if something's really boring go home mm. Yeah. Why are you staying at something you don't enjoy? No, there is no rule that says you go to a party and you have to stay four hours. Yeah. You can go to a party, you can stay for an hour and yeah. go home. And again, yeah. you know, if you've got your, an excuse why you need yeah. to leave, you know, yeah. for whatever reason it is. Mm. It's, but, but planning it's really works. Yeah. And also, um, you talked about whether your partner drinks and stuff like that and persistent friends. And they're sort mm. of the hardest because they've been used to having a drinking buddy. Mm. And part... You know, and that it can be really hard, particularly if a lot of your friendships have been based on a certain type of behaviour. Mm -hmm. And so I suggest that people can be, re you know, have the conversation we're really bad at having all the time, which is, you know what, I've made a decision uh, to try something that's going to be better for my health. Mm -hmm. And it, I would really appreciate it as you, as my friend, as my partner, as my loved one, would help me do that mm -hmm. in the next few months. So, rather, so I would really like it if you could not badger me to have a drink over the next month or open that glass of bottle yeah, yeah. The end of the day. I would really like it if you could help me find an alternative that I can drink when we're together yeah. I would really appreciate it if we could shift um, the social things we do to things that are less boozy if you can give people a really specific thing Mm -hmm. that they can do to help you who doesn't want to help their mate mm. you know yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. and so rather than thinking that you're you're that you're you're taking something away from them which is what they might feel you can go right no you I want you to help me on my journey mm. and then is there anything that you're doing for your health that I can help yeah. you with in yeah. return and then suddenly it feels like a partnership and something you're doing as friends mm. and you can and you're talking about it in the terms of I and you know so I'm not trying to stop you doing anything no I'm asking that we can do some things that are slightly but different. also a bit more of a reasoning you know behind it and and asking for that support yeah. rather than just going right we're often very, not very good at saying what it is that we want and need yeah. and I think now is the time to be having those conversations because there's mm. quite a lot of change that will benefit women if they take yeah. control of their lives towards their I'm not saying oh you must you can live wildly until you're 40 and then you've got to go oh my god my perimenopause is hitting <laughs> however everything that we're talking about here is going to have a knock-on effect on your overall physical, emotional and mental well-being. We're not advocating any of us anything that's going to cause you any, any damage. Yeah. What? You may be sad that you can't eat as many donuts as you want, but you know, you have to let you say you find something yeah. else that fits into it. So hmm. having conversations now, I think you're absolutely right, we're not very good at having them and we need yeah. to start saying because there's, there's some very, very tricky stuff coming up in menopause, you know, that nobody mm. we all know about, you know, Oh, apparently you have hot flushes. I think that's all I knew before menopause. Yeah. I didn't know about any of the others. Well, I didn't Delight. know about the night sweats. That, I didn't know you about know, are actually a similar thing, but you know, whereas a lot of women say that they the now, of, you know, there's so much. They avoid alcohol because of their night sweats. It just doesn't mm. work for them anymore. Mm. And then after a while of not drinking, they realise they've actually gained some stuff, like some hours in the day, <laughs> yeah. yeah, some energy in the morning. Yeah. yeah. So actually, um, one of the things that I say a lot is, imagine if you could invent a pill, right, that helped you um, sleep better, lose weight be more energetic, be more productive, would make a fortune, right? Mm -hmm. But actually you can do all of that by taking alcohol out, out. or as yeah. much alcohol out of your diet because mm -hmm. it really does. So actually, as you go through um, the perimenopause and menopause, you might be able to balance out some of the effects of the menopause as well mm. by not drinking, by giving yourself some more energy, being able to get up and, and run, um, not consuming empty calories. Um, there are so many things about alcohol that, um, you know, it spikes your blood sugar level, even though there's not a lot of sugar mm. in some alcohol because it's it got rid of in the production process, it acts just like a sugar in terms of... Um, uh, of um, uh, raising and lowering your blood sugar mm. level, which is why you go for a kebab yeah. at the end of the night out, right? So, and then you eat more calories the following day, yeah. and you're too lethargic yeah. to yeah. go to the gym. Yeah. And you never go, 
do you know I'm really craving a pomegranate? You go yeah. the next day, I really want to I've make not had a KFC roll. for five years, <laughs> people. It's really exciting. So, so it's not just that those things are empty calories. It does all those things to you as well. It takes mm. two days to get over a hangover mm. and reality for your body to get mm. over a, a big night out. It also slows down your metabolism. So if on one hand you're trying to lose weight and the other hand you're piling in a couple of glasses of wine every night and that's affecting how much you eat as well, all of those things combine. And so being able to take a step back and say, right, let's see what a month feels like. Mm-hmm. Let's take a break. Um, is a really good way to do that, doing a sober sprint. So yeah, yeah. A sober sprint. I like that. Yeah, I like a little bit of an acronym. Yeah, yeah, because actually some people carry on, some people do too. I can tell you, it was three months before my energy came back. Um, and it was amazing. Six months before I felt like I was like clever again. Mm-hmm. And then it took me a year to realise that I no longer felt awkward at events when I didn't have a drink mm-hmm. in my hand. Mm-hmm. You do feel awkward mm-hmm. to begin with. You're Did you avoid to... events initially? Did I didn't avoid feel... events because I'm very gobby. <laughs> and um, and I, I saw it as a challenge really, mm-hmm. which I'm glad I did because I learned a lot. Yeah. But there was a point uh, at the beginning where I thought, oh, I'm just not as much fun as I used to be. Mm-hmm. And then about a year in, I thought, hang on a minute, I just cracked a really good joke there. <laughs> much fun as I used to be and I don't need a drink anymore it's like a broken bone somehow it heals but I don't quite know when so it is all possible it seems quite scary but it's not it's not Mm. scary as you think I think also and it's you'll know more about this than me it's what you can drink when you go into a social setting, there's yeah. only so much mineral water you want to drink or orange yeah. juice. I mean, I would never want to drink orange juice in yeah. the evening, but some of them, oh, here's an orange juice. But when you go to a pub, we don't want to be drinking I'm Coke so or... anti-orange juice. Um, I, I went, corporate events do it all the time, orange juice, yeah. five. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm really bad at influencing yeah. people who might want to, to give us work by tweeting how awful their drink selections are. But it's really <laughs> bad. Because you'll fall off, you fall off yeah. that not drinking So punch. I have a couple of tips for all yep. of that. Yep. Um, one is, is always carry a small bottle of cordial with you in your bag. I use a Muji um, shampoo bottle, the little squeezy one. But you can get those. You, you can, they now produce them, don't they? Those little Yeah, little ones. ones. But yeah. you can do those as well. But I, I like to go for middle class elderflower well, cordial. Oh, oh well, yes, we all be. Yeah, obviously, um, and so it means you've always got something you can drink in your bag. Yeah, you've always yeah. got something to put in fizzy water. And I am mm. such a cheap date in the pub these days. So that, yeah. that that's one so what you're saying. Put some like elderflower cordial in a little Muji. I've spritzer. always got one in the front of my bag. So mm. that whenever I'm we in know the where pub, to go then. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. So when I uh, so I always do that. The other is is if you're going out for dinners and and uh, at restaurants, even going to a pub, um, phone up in advance and ask them what they've got. Tell them you're not drinking and could you bring your own alcohol-free wine? Mm-hmm. And actually loads of restaurants are fine with it. Some might charge you a small corkage, but you know yeah. what? It's still cheaper it's than buying still cheaper That's than a wine. really good <laughs> idea because actually yeah. you might miss that sort of... It's a habit, so it's a tool, it's isn't it? you want to and sip and, and, sing and, it, and it just, it would be... Being really sippable is really important mm-hmm. because you talked about a Coke. Well, A, it's, mm-hmm. it's packed full of sugar, yeah. but also you, you, you drink a Coke quickly because you're thirsty yeah. and you don't yeah. sip it. Yeah. Um, and so it's about, um, it's about having something sippable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've actually got some props yeah, for let me do great. Let me do this. So, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about alcohol-free drinks because yeah. it, um, it's a really good... If you are taking a month off for an extended, extended period of finding your favourite alcohol-free drinks is one of your great distractions because you can spend hours <laughs> finding things, trying things. Yeah. Which yeah. Not, you know, interesting. <clears throat> yeah, so you can try all sorts of things. And yes, you're right, actually. Um, bitters, Sam's uh, um, uh, Angostura bitters in tonic is really good. Mm. Um, uh, Fever Tree are doing their own flavoured tonics yeah. now, so you can just drink mm. them on their own. Mm. Any cocktail bar, I like the Morello Cherry tonics. Mm. Mm. That's good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. even chocolate, um, sorry, Morello Cherry bitters. Um, they even do chocolate bitters, but I'm not quite sure how that tastes in tonic. Um, you don't want to mix your, oh, your tonic yeah. and your chocolate. No, yeah. I, don't, I might have a bar of chocolate and a tonic. Mm. Yeah. But to drink, yeah. no. Yeah. no. Anyway. stick with the hot chocolate. So anyway, so, <laughs> But there's a few things that you need to know about alcohol-free drinks. One is, is if you're always looking for something that will that will feel exactly the same as your alcoholic drink that you normally drink, it, you'll never quite find it. The alternative no. gin and tonics, or the tonics and bitters in, just won't give you that kick, which is basically the alcohol. Yeah, yeah. So don't don't ever don't, expect it's gonna be a to get the same a direct <laughs> substitute. Go hooray! Um, the other is, is if you remember, and this is a terrible thing to say because it will break everyone's um, spirits really, but 
we learn to like alcohol it's a learned behavior because our body naturally mm. repels it because it is a poison so our body naturally goes no and we go no but we like the effects of <laughs> drinking right so we do learn to like alcohol you can learn to like the alternatives Mm -hmm. um, it's not it's not the end of the world it just you have to retune your palate yes it's more. like <clears throat> giving up sugar in your tea yeah you know. and all that yeah. sort of stuff so don't discard all the alternatives too quickly mm -hmm. the good news is is there are lots of better alternatives mm -hmm. out there now and one of the drinks that actually does better without alcohol in is beer now oh, I was okay. never a beer drinker but I really appreciate the fact that um, these are good quality products in their own mm. right. Mm. Um, and also, a beer's got, um, largely, they've all got about three ingredients in them, and one of them, those ingredients isn't sugar. So next mm. to water, the healthiest thing you can drink in a pub is an alcohol-free beer. No sugar. Uh, yeah. So a bottle of Nanny State, which is made by BrewDog, 26 calories a bottle, no sugar. Brilliant. And, and actually, that's quite a nice bottle, because some of the alcohol-free products previously have yeah. been a bit like... Oh, I'm not drinking. I've got this very sort of dull drink, but, but actually, there is. It's that holding. It's a prop. Yeah, it's the thing. Yeah. You don't want to look. There are some amazing beers out there, and they're worth trying. There's even some I like, and I'm not a beer drinker. There's a website called drydrinker.com. Use a discount code Club Soda VIP. You can actually get a mixed case because mm. people don't tend to want to buy a whole. Even a six pack of alcohol free beers, unless mm. they know they like it, it's a really weird thing because we, we buy wine and beer all the time mm. whether we liked it or not. They do mixed cases and they've started to do the wines and stuff. But Tesco's have just introduced an alcohol free section to their, wow. their supermarkets and it's amazing. And they've got Nanny State, they've got um, a new beer called Innes and something which mm -hmm. our members are raving about mm -hmm. they've got all the wines and again in the wines you get what you pay for just like you would without yes. alcohol in yeah. um, and so the Torres wines which are de-alcoholised at 0.5% are there but so are the Iceberg wines and Iceberg mm -hmm. brought out two fizzies and they've got four um, non-alcoholic wines of red and white and rosé mm -hmm. so try them out and decide what you like and, re and recognise them for being something sippable that you can have in the evening that's a, yeah. a good replacement. And like I say, what amazes me most is these are all lower in calorie. Mm -hmm. They won't spike your sugar levels in the same way as alcohol does. Mm -hmm. um, and and it feels like a bit of a treat. It's not something, yeah. you, it's not something you'd also give your kids. Yeah. And just to let you know, um, in Britain we have to call 0.5 low alcohol, but really 0.5 is nothing Pretty yeah. Yeah. Um, so, there is about so, the same yeah. in a ripe banana there's about the same in the orange juice that's been in your fridge for three days and yeah. gone through some natural fermentation mm -hmm. you will process that alcohol quicker than you can mm -hmm. drink it um, so um, so use finding alternatives um, mm -hmm. and things that you can so that's out. quite reassuring for people yeah. because mm -hmm. if you don't like if you actually like that taste and I think you're talking about learnt yeah. we learn to like yeah um, beer or wine or whatever it is as a teenager and it carries forward and we've been drinking that for 30 years it is quite hard to go oh I'm just going to mineral water now so I think that yeah is, yeah what did you say it's called drink or drink uh, dry, dry drinker dry. right um, but it also means that you know you can take these to events and if I go to weddings and everything I would just take my own nobody yeah. cares it's yeah. fine yeah um, if you're worried ask in advance but um, places find it really hard to refuse you if, mm. if you ask them what they've got and they say or it's just juice and you go, right, I'm going to bring my own alcohol-free mm. wine. Uh, um, one of our members went to a wedding but you ca um, and um, asked in advance, she, she just paid a 50p every time to get them to pour mm. her her wine that they put in mm. their fridge. And they were absolutely fine with mm. it. Another member uh, asked and they said no. And she went, I don't know what to do. It's a, it's a <laughs> wedding on a boat. I'm going to be stuck <laughs> in a boat with drunk people for hours. <laughs> and we said, hang on a minute take your own and she went oh yeah and literally throughout the wedding she posted these photos of her sneaking <laughs> her up one going do you know what what added to the enjoyment was I felt so naughty <laughs> pouring my own alcohol free wine but she said it made it and I really enjoyed being able to just update you on where yeah, I was yeah. so um so there's a void of discovery mm. out there. Mm. I went mad with my soda stream when I first gave up, finding all sorts of cordials and bitters and yes. things like that. So, um, so see that as part of the journey. And even if it means that you find something that you can swap some of your units out with. So you, yes, know, you go, right, well, actually, on, on weekdays, I'm not going to drink. And if I want to drink, I'll have some of these. And I'll save my drinking to uh, weekends or when yeah. I'm with friends. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not going to drink at home alone anymore, mm -hmm. but I will have an alcohol-free drink. Then that's a good way to make the moderation yeah. work for you as yeah. well. Yeah. So, yeah. Fantastic. Well, it's good to know Tesco's uh, 
you know, they've actually yeah. stepped up to the plate. Yeah, yeah. alcohol sales have stagnated and sales and alcohol-free drinks are increasing. Mm. So that's that's interesting. So basically you're part of a growing trend. Yeah. Yeah. You're ahead of the curve. Yeah, exactly. Wow. There we go. Trendsetters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And every and you know what? Everyone's always fascinated about the alcohol-free stuff because everyone wants to know. They're all really interested. Mm. And you'll never be short of starting a conversation if what you've got is a pint of tea with the mad tea leaves in the bottom, mm. I can tell yeah. you. So, you know, yeah. find the things that work for you, but you don't need other people's permission to not drink. And, mm. you know, it is, you know, a good thing to try. Yeah. Fantastic. And it can only bring good things. Yeah. Or whatever we're talking about. Yeah. Well, hopefully, yes. Life. You know, yeah. Can you, can you ever regret taking a month off drinking? Mm. No, mm. probably not. But no. you could you could regret, you know, getting drunk every weekend for a month, can't yeah. you? So. Yeah. And the way it makes you feel, and actually it's quite a depressing time, it yeah. can be. So anything that actually lifts your spirits and... Well, it gives you more energy. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers. Thank you so much. No, that's very much. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Really, really.